This is the second part of Charlie Brown. In the auditorium, the whole Peanuts gang danced to a jazzy tune that Schroeder played on his piano. Charlie Brown walked onto the stage. Let's get right down to work, he said. It's important that you pay strict attention to the director. Am I right? I said, am I right? But no one paid attention to Charlie Brown. They had started dancing again. <laughs> Stop the music, Charlie Brown yelled. We're going to do this play and we're going to do it right. Lucy, pass out those scripts and costumes. One by one, the kids found out their roles in the play. Frida would play the innkeeper's wife. Pigpen would play the innkeeper. And Shermie would play the shepherd. And Sno Snoopy would play all the characters in the script that were animals and even some that weren't. Let's rehearse the scene at the end, directed Charlie Brown. Let's take it from the top. Places, action. But once more, the kids started dancing and fooling around. Good grief. Charlie Brown just rolled his eyes. See, there they are fooling around and being silly. Look at them all. That does it, Charlie Brown explained. If we're ever going to get this play off the ground, we've got to have some cooperation. Let's face it, replied Lucy. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial, Charlie Brown insisted. We need the proper mood. We need a Christmas tree. Lucy nodded excitedly. A great, big, shiny, aluminum Christmas tree. That's it, Charlie Brown. You get the tree. I'll handle the crowd. Okay, I'll take Linus with me. The rest of you practice your lines. Charlie Brown said firmly, Get the biggest aluminum tree you can find, Charlie Brown, called Lucy. Yeah, do something right for a change, Charlie Brown, added Peppermint Patty, as the boys walked into the cold winter night. They followed a set of gleaming spotlights to a Christmas tree lot. It was filled with shiny metal trees, polka dotted trees, and trees in every color of the rainbow. Clank, clank, clank. Linus knocked on one of the metal trees. Gee, do they still make wooden Christmas trees? Asked Linus. He didn't see anything like that in the Christmas tree lot. Then Charlie Brown spotted a small little scraggly pine tree. It had a wooden trunk and soft green needles. This little tree, this little green one here, seems to need a good home, he said excitedly. I don't know, Charlie Brown, Lana said. Remember what Lucy said. This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care, Charlie Brown insisted. We'll decorate it and it will be just right for our Christmas. Besides, I think it needs me. Soon, Charlie Brown and Linus walked onto the stage. We're back, Charlie Brown announced as he set the tree on top of Schroeder's piano. When the kids rushed over to see the tree, their mouths dropped in shock. The scraggly little tree was not what they had expected. You were supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree, Lucy asked. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown, added Peppermint Patty. Charlie Brown sighed. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about, he explained. Okay, this is the second part. We're going to the next part. 